visible. I don't know what people are going to do. He's hiding. Smart Casper. Smart Casper. Hello, everyone. I am Kimberly Adams, and welcome back to Make Me Smart, where we make today make sense. I'm Kyle Rizdahl, just trying to get the rundown in front of me because it has been a day, <laughs> let me tell you that. Thanks for everybody joining us on the podcast and on the YouTube live stream for this edition of Economics on Tap. It's a Friday, the day in the week where we do the news. We'll have some drinks, although I'm not drinking right now, uh, and then also uh, a little game at the end. Yes. Well, I'm trying. I got, a, well, I got a soccer game, and I'm running around with kids 50 years younger than I am, so, you know. Yes, well, you don't want to. to forget I'm that. glad that you're not drinking and driving for the win. Yes. I am drinking yes. wine. Yes. I'm drinking a Shiraz. <laughs> and let's see what folks are drinking in the YouTube. Ooh, Jennifer Flippin Pierce has a lemon drop martini. And Ooh. I, Sticky let's see. IPA, whatever that is. A Terrapin Sticky Brewing Sticky. White Chocolate Moohoo. A white chocolate milk stout that Kevin Flanagan is drinking. Really, Kevin? Chuck really? is Chuck Klein, Klein, Kleinet. Sorry if I said your name wrong. Is drinking Russell's Reserve Ten Year Bourbon. Let's see what we're drinking over in the Discord. Discord Hypnosis IPA from Firestone. Uh, yep, that's let's very good see. Stuff. Is it? um yeah. yeah so and what about people with the anybody got a good mocktail i want to support all those not drinking still or just well, in a, general a, jacob h is drinking lemon ginger tea with a sugar cane stick for a sore throat so there's that nice i hope you feel better jacob yeah. Yeah. let's see well i think oh here we go we've got a lychee green tea with brown sugar boba okay oh, man. nice that. <laughs> well it's like little Amazing. snot balls in your drink i've never understood it so well it is i think you just but insulted I, someone's I whole culture <laughs> I, I know i did but still i apologize for that but oh my god i have a son who's a very very big boba guy and he's like dad you're so wrong and i'm like no i'm so right so i'm, I'm so right <laughs> <laughs> anyway. all right well all right. we've Do got a bunch of stuff to get through yeah I, I keep looking around because this is actually my first live stream um back in my house since i've been yeah. back on vacation and i have like a new router and a new modem thank you folks in the discord who helped me out because remember the last time my computer like went bad yes. right before our holiday one yes. so people in the discord like suggested a new router and modem for me so i replaced all that stuff oh and really now my oh, that's so funny cameras in a yeah so now my camera is in a different place and so i keep looking around like where's the camera all right <laughs> that's great all right news why don't you go first kai all right, I've, I've got two, one of which is substantive and one of which is just uh, historically interesting to me. I just want to make sure everybody understands it. And it occurs to me as I say this, I don't think I've said it on this podcast. I think I said it on the radio show. Um, so we are all paying higher interest rates because the Federal Reserve is raising interest rates, right? We're paying higher interest rates on car loans and mortgages, although they're down from their peak, adjustable rate. I mean, you name it, we're paying more for it. Interest payers in this economy also include the government of the United States. And I think it's relevant to point out here, as the Wall Street Journal writes uh, this morning, the Treasury's spending on interest on the federal debt was $261 billion in the first four months of this fiscal year. That is a 33% increase from the $196 billion spent in the same period last year. So we are spending so much more money. It's like funny money now. The numbers are so big, but we're spending so much more of it because interest rates are going up and everybody needs to be aware of that. And as the debt limit approaches and as people have real conversations about it and, and fake political conversations about it, you have more to understand, <laughs> right, more of the, way more of those. <laughs> people have to understand what is actually going on as interest rates go up and our national debt increases, right? And look, is, is it a challenge now? Yes. Is it a, a systemic economic problem now? No. Does it have to be dealt with? Yes. It's, just, it's a really complicated problem, but our national debt is very large and it is costing us ever more money, ever more money. Yeah. All right. So, Why don't you go for one. your fun one? All right. All right. So here's my other one. So I'm a history guy. And also there's really cool history to be had in the South Pole. And I'm a big fan of Ernest Shackleton. If you know anything about him, he's the guy who oh, went down there with a bunch of people. Their boat got trapped on the ice and he saved every single one of them over a two plus year expedition grueling to get them back to civilization. Anyway, 
last year or two years ago, the ship, the Endurance, was found at the bottom of uh, the sea near Antarctica. And because it's so cold there, and there's not really very many organisms living in the water, um, that ship was amazingly well preserved. So there's that. There's also now, though, a book out uh, about the Endurance and about the finding of it. And it's in the Wall Street Journal, and uh, the review is. Uh, and uh, I'm going to read it, and I just want everybody to know about it. It's called The Ship Beneath the Ice, Endurance Found. Um, I get no uh, emoluments or remuneration for pimping this book, but it's just, it's really good. It looks to be really good. That's it. When That's it. Trump was president uh, and all of the people like trying to curry favor with the White House were staying at the Trump Hotel, which is now a Waldorf Astoria, yeah. someone oh, no, no, no. Um, projected onto the entrance emoluments enter here over the door oh, that's of fun. it. <laughs> <laughs> because you know they could stand on it's you know on the street and you're projecting onto the building you're not violating anybody's you know private property and mm -hmm. it was like emoluments enter here anyway that book That's looks great. really good I, I hope they make it yeah. into a movie too well but that would be a really cool like documentary to see as well yeah speaking yeah. of documentaries have you seen the documentary about the thai uh, football team about the kids that got rescued by the divers oh no it's supposed to be really good who did who did oh, that my oh my gosh man. it's it was, so um... good the same guy who did the free solo one yes um, yes 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 that yes. documentary Jimmy, is um... so good yeah yeah for sure yes yes for sure it's supposed to be great it's very good. I've seen it. I actually got my sister and my mom to watch it. And they're not huge documentary people, but they both, it's like, you know how it's going to end, but you're still like edge of your seat. Right, right, right. Yes, yes, That's yes, cool. yes. Okay, well, I have two as well, although I see everybody's requests for Jasper in the chat. Jasper is here. He was just behind <laughs> me. He's napping there. Everybody happy now? Great. <laughs> Everybody comes for the cat, not for me. That's fine. I yes, don't mind. Ryan Coleman. It was Jimmy. It was Jimmy Chin and his wife. I think it's his wife, Elizabeth uh, Farsahelli, who did that uh, movie on the on the soccer team. Yeah. Yes. All right. So I also have two. Um, my first one is related to the Super Bowl. Hat tip to Richard Cunningham, producer on your show, who highlighted this, this one. Yeah. It's an article in Teen Vogue about you know why this person isn't going to be watching the Super Bowl um, and the uh, concept is because football is too dangerous to exist and that is the premise and it is so dangerous and I've kind of alluded to this as we've been talking about it but this person really articulated the the feelings that I have about it in a nice way and I'm going to read just an excerpt I know many people make the argument that these players know what they're getting into, but I find that absurd on a few different levels. First, we're constantly learning more about just how prevalent concussions and traumatic brain injuries are in the NFL and how far reaching the effects of such injuries can be. And the racial dynamics of being an NFL player, where you literally put your body on the line for your job, cannot be ignored. The 32 NFL owners, none of whom are black and only two of whom are not white, profit massively off the labor of players, nearly 70% of whom are black. And in a country where upward mobility for black children is much less likely than it is for white children, how can we ask gifted young black football players to turn away an average of $2.7 million per year salary in right. the NFL? Right. Right. And every time I even like think about football, and you're a history guy, you'll get this analogy. I think about like ancient Roman gladiators who oh, were sure. often people sure. who either were enslaved or coming from very poor backgrounds and their way to like make it and to live a good life was to literally kill themselves or each other in the ring yeah. for the entertainment of the Roman elites. And if you think about who's at the Super Bowl, who's watching the Super Bowl, who owns the NFL teams, it gives that same vibe and it's, these, these guys are really hurting yeah. themselves. And like, you know, they get to make that choice for themselves, but it's it's problematic. So yeah. that's a really good piece in Teen Vogue. Highly recommend. Another piece I highly recommend, it's a long read for the weekend, but it's quite good, is this piece in the New Yorker magazine about imposter syndrome. And the headline is uh, why everyone feels like, well, it feels like everyone is faking it. And it's the idea, they went, the, writer went back and talked to the two women 
who came up with the concept of in an academic paper, not the imposter syndrome, but the imposter phenomenon, because it's not actually a syndrome. They never said it was a syndrome. They think it's problematic that it's being called a syndrome because they were trying to describe somebody's experience, not a pathology. And there's been all this pushback to the idea of the imposter syndrome in that it sort of doesn't address sort of systemic inequities against women and particularly against women of mm. color that actually don't undervalue. It's not that women undervalue themselves. It's that the systems around us undervalue us and we're constantly having to compensate for that. And so sort of everybody encouraging women to own up to imposter syndrome is kind of toxic in a way. It's a really interesting piece. It's long, but worth reading. Sorry. Yes. To, to all of that. And this is completely sideways and, and uh, maybe I'm out of my lane, but, but no, I don't think I am because honestly, this is a societal conversation that we should have. Did you see the piece in the New York times magazine last weekend about menopause? No, I didn't. What was it about? I mean, unbelievable. About you got to read it. It's, cr it's so good. It is so good. And, and the, the idea that half of the population slightly more than half, I think, uh, deals with menopause and it's like barely talked about, barely taught in medical schools, little understood and women deal with it so alone. I just, mm. it's amazing. Highly recommend. Yeah. Highly it's recommend. It's kind of like that piece that we talked about a while back, um, you know, about, and I, and I found it very interesting because I didn't realize this was the regional pronunciation, but about the clitoris as opposed to the clitoris, which is what I said. Oh, yeah. Um, but or maybe that's just like a conservative upbringing thing where nobody ever said it out loud and it's only read it yeah. until I was an adult. Yeah. Um, yeah, but, you know, there are all these things that affect women that mm -hmm. just don't There's get no discussed. And, you know, and so I'm definitely happy uh, yeah. to that it is getting covered. And so, yeah, I'm going to go back and read that menopause. Yeah, it's, uh, really thing. Good. it's really good. It's really good. Awesome. All right. We're going to make a we're going to make a slightly awkward turn here. Uh, but, you know. Got to pay the bill somehow. I Here's mean, the deal. Yes. We, right? You know, we, we can yeah, only have these conversations, me and Kimberly, uh, mm -hmm. when all y'all support us, right? If we do news, we do information, we do context, and we do thoughts on issues of the day on Marketplace and on tech and on the morning show and on this podcast and all the other stuff Marketplace does. None of it, though, is free. So we are coming to you again, uh, as we do from time to time. Now through Valentine's Day, you can show your love for Marketplace by starting a $5 a month donation. And in return, we will thank you with an investor T-shirt my friend Kimberly Adams will show you hers because I do not have mine on. It has our logo on the front. It says, I'm invested in Marketplace on the back. It's gray. It's, uh, it's quite stylish. Uh, yeah, mine looks exactly the same as hers, except it's on the chair inside and I didn't have the time to get it. Um, <laughs> you can only get them though on our donation form. So try that, would you? $5 a month. We could, we could really yes. use the help. Yes, and it's comfy, I can tell you. I always get these shirts in like very, very large sizes so I can sleep in them because they are comfy and nice. <laughs> and yeah, but we'd really appreciate your support. It does matter and you know, it keeps us honest because we know that we're always accountable to you all and not necessarily to the clicks and what's popular and what people might wanna say, but what we actually think serves our audience. And so we would definitely appreciate your support once again marketplace.org slash give smart. You can also find the link on the show notes and yeah, we'd be grateful. Quick break. And when we come back, half full, half empty. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's half empty, half full. I don't even know. It depends on the vibe this week. <laughs> you get to decide. Yes. All right, this is half full, half empty, or half empty, half full, depending on your mood. And it is a game where our very own Drew Jostad gives us news topics, and we tell you how we are feeling about them. And for our last round, you get to tell us, at least if you're following along on the YouTube live stream, you get to tell us how you are feeling about them. Drew, take it away. Are you half full or half empty on alcohol brands other than Anheuser-Busch getting their chance to advertise at the Super Bowl? Oh, yeah, very interesting. So Anheuser-Busch gave up its 33-year exclusive with the Super Bowl uh, this past June. So now there's going to be all kinds of other stuff. There's going to be Molson and there's going to be spirits and all kinds of stuff. Look, I'm half full, uh, you know, 
I, I look forward to some good ads. That's really all it is. But yeah. That's so funny. As a St. Louis person, I had no idea that it was the oh, exclusive yeah. rights. I just thought, you know, oh, yeah. they are big and that's why they did it. And, you know, the Clydesdales were such a powerful part of my childhood. Mm -hmm. Every parade, mm -hmm. every big event, they'd bring out the Clydesdales in, in St. Louis in the area. We'd take field trips to Grant's Farm, which is this like farm oh, wow. area that ha where the Clydesdales actually live when they're not on tour. And uh, yeah, so... As long as the Clydesdales are still Ooh. somewhere present, I will be happy to look at other ads, but I still want to see the horses. That's all. Fair so enough. Fair enough. half full still, nevertheless. Half full. Equal opportunity. There we go. Yes. Sure. Okay. Are you half full or half empty on the Super Bowl halftime show featuring Rihanna? All the way full. Love her. Yeah. I want to see what she does. Yeah. How, how can you not be full? It's going to be awesome gonna be awesome for real yeah i don't think she does bad shows so yeah there's that that was an easy one yeah. quick easy one all right uh half full <laughs> or half empty let's see a group of 10 former nfl players is suing the league claiming that they were improperly dis denied disability benefits are you half full or half empty I'm 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 all the way full on that suit and all the way empty on the way the NFL treats its labor pool, right? I mean, that's you know we were just talking about this with Kimberly's news item. It's um, look, there are known health risks in playing this sport, and yes, they're all adults and they do it voluntarily, but the league doesn't do all that very much to help them out. So half full on the suit, half empty on the league. Same, same. Yeah, yeah, gotta be. I hope they win. <laughs> just. Yeah, there's so much money yeah. in this system that the least they can do is make sure these folks get the care they need. Yep. All right, I got one more for the Super Bowl the themed half, half full. Is this the last one, last one. Yep, last one. Okay, oh, so last this is one. the one so where everybody pull, gets pull to weigh people, in. Pay attention. There are 315 yes. of you on this uh, on this thing, so we should have uh, 315 votes. Yes, let's if, do it. I don't know if Kimberly's sister is here. I don't think so. She According, usually makes herself known. <laughs> that's true. According to a survey from the Workforce Institute, 18 million Americans, 18 plus million Americans are planning to take a sick day on Monday after the Super Bowl. <laughs> are you half full or half empty? <laughs> All right. Let's, Drew, let's, <laughs> let's run it one more time for the folks on the live stream so that they can hear it. And then yes. we'll uh, get your votes. According to a survey? From the Workforce Institute, 18 million plus Americans are planning to take a sick day on Monday after the Super Bowl. Are you half full or half empty? You know, it's funny. I had a doctor's appointment this afternoon, and as I was leaving, the guy at the front desk was like, oh, are you watching the Super Bowl this weekend? And I was like, probably not. He was like, well, then what are you going to have to talk about on Monday? <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, that's that's not an unreasonable thing, right? There it's was also not. This, right. No, totally. There's also this game. I don't know if you remember John Carney, right? Who used to be on the on the Friday show, now writes for Breitbart, and those two things are related. Um, but John would play a game that uh, involved not intentionally not finding out the score of the Super Bowl and trying to be mm -hmm. like the last person on the planet not to know. Hmm. Why? Yeah, I forget what it was called. I I don't know. I don't know. Just cause. Hmm. <laughs> Ramplo says in the chat, "Don't like working harder because other people can't control their drinking." Fair. All those people fair. calling in totally sick fair. because they didn't handle themselves at the Super Bowl party are making it harder for those who do remain at, who do come into work on Monday. Yeah. Uh, so I'm so, I'm gonna be half empty. I'm gonna be half empty on this, and yeah. I don't think that's that's cool. I, uh, I, I think but, you got, if you're gonna take the Monday off. Sorry, go ahead. Well, I was gonna say. I think you're gonna say. Go ahead. Well, yeah, if you get paid vacation, which not everybody in this economy does, it's important to note, uh, mm -hmm. take, take a day vacation, right? Yeah. Plan it. Let yeah, people know. Because that, the, the, comment, the comment was a great one, right? Somebody's got to do your work if you're not there. And so, yeah. you know, let everybody know you're not. Although, sure. although, you know, one could argue a bad hangover, you are pretty sick. Oh, Kimberly, now you're just enabling 
I'm not going to enable. I'm saying it's a bad thing. Look, I just did an well, hour that's... long special on substance use disorders. I have a that's lot true. of things to say on alcohol that's use true. disorder and the there is no healthy amount of alcohol to drink, none at all. And so let's just, you know, be real about it, but it does indeed make yeah. you sick. Anywho, that well, that was a so bright so way to end things, wasn't it? Well, so here, here are the results though. So Super Sick Monday, and this is from Mel. Thank you on the Slack, because I still don't know how to work the bleeping poll on the thing. Oh, it's right there. Uh, half full, 50%, half empty, 49%, poll complete, 207 votes. What happened to the other uh, 108 of you? That's what I want to know. That's yeah. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Well, that right. was fun. There we go. And yeah. enjoyed it. And that is it for today. Thank you to everybody who joined on the live stream, who was following along in Discord. Um, we will be back next week. And I hope that you will keep sending us your comments and questions, or if there's a topic that you want us to make you smart about, or you want to make us smart about, or if you have a question for what do you want to know Wednesday, we have so many options for ways to get involved. And we you can do. reach us at 508-UB-SMART, or you can email us at makemesmart at marketplace.org. Make Me Smart is produced by Courtney Bergseeger. Today's episode was engineered by Charlton Thorpe. Drew Jostad wrote the theme music to Half Full, Half Empty. Antonio Barreras is our intern. The team behind our Friday game is Mel Rosenberg, Emily McCune, and Antoinette Brock. Marissa Cabrera is our acting senior producer. Bridget Bodner is the director of podcast. And Francesca Levy is the executive director of digital. Timing is everything. Someone pointed.